Hi, it's Martin Perhiniak. Welcome back to PSD Touch Plus. Today in the shortcut series, I'm going to talk about file formats and especially about JPEG files. I'm sure you know that saving PSD files gives you a lot of advantages to these compressed file formats. So for example, in Photoshop files, you can save layers, masks, and uh, lots of different things that you can't store in a JPEG file. But there are a couple of things that you can actually store. First of all, you can save guides into a JPEG file. Let me just prove that to you. So this is a JPEG file and I'm going to drag a couple of guides here. Okay, so I place some guides there and I'm going to save this and close the file. Then I open it again. And as you can see, even though it was just a simple JPEG file, I still have my guides there. Let me go to view menu and clear the guides out. And just like with guides, you can also save slices. If you work for web, you can create slices. With the slice tool, you can put these slices on your image. Let's say I placed a couple of slices. I save this, again I close it, and I open it up again. I will go to bridge and double click on this image and as you can see even though it's a simple JPEG file we we'll still have the information about the slices. Now I'm going to use the slice select tool and delete these slices because I don't really need them and what else can we save into a JPEG file? You might be surprised but we can even save a vanishing point grid into a JPEG file. So if I go to the filter menu and I choose vanishing point here I can define a grid so I can create a perspective and let's just say I press down command and I drag out another guide and maybe another one here okay something like that obviously for this image it doesn't really make sense to use a perspective grid but I'm going to just use something simple like this and then I'm going to click on OK and if I save this JPEG file come back to it again next time and I go to the uh, filter vanishing point feature. As you can see, we have the information stored in our compressed JPEG format. So next time if someone asks you, what can you save in a JPEG file from Photoshop? You can now tell that you can actually save a lot of things, guides, slices, the vanishing point grid, and there are another useful place where you should go when you save JPEG files. Instead of always going just to simply save as and then choose JPEG, instead of that you should choose save for web because here you have much more control over what you want to do with a JPEG file. First of all, you can have a really good preview of the compression and the quality changes of your image. So for example here, if I choose very high or maximum for the JPEG quality, you can see this is how it will look like. For example, if I use low, you can immediately see the difference in the compression. It's the JPEG noise that you will start to see here. The great thing in this dialog box is that you can easily change the quality by dragging it up and down, click on quality, the word, and dragging it up and down you can see the change in the quality and you can also see the size of the file. So your output, the optimized file size is here on the bottom left. So let's just see if I increase the quality, that will also increase. If I decrease, decrease the quality, the file size will decrease as well. And there is also a time, in this case 13 seconds, which is based on the download speed. So with a modem with this download speed, you can get 13 seconds download for this file. But let's just set it to 1 megabit per second cable connection. With that, it's 2 seconds to download this image or maybe even less. If I set it the quality to maximum 100, that will take 6 seconds. Here on the top left you can change between the original and optimized to see the difference and as you can see because I chose convert to sRGB the colors will vary a bit so from the original to the optimized but I can also see the difference before and after like this so for example if I set the quality low I can see before on top and after at the bottom let me zoom a bit closer to, to show you the difference when you have two views, you can even set up 
one with a different compression so for example we can choose uh, PNG 8 and then we can see the size there and the size here for the JPEG and the quality of course a PNG 8 one will never be as good as a PNG 24 which as you can see here on the top looks like this and this one at the bottom looks like that if I set the quality to 100 then still the PNG 24 is bigger in file size but the PNG has the advantage that there you can use transparency and by the way here in this dialog box you can also change the size of the output file so you can change the percent for example to 50 percent and then obviously you can see the resize version here in the preview and the ac accordingly all the file sizes as well one more thing which you should know about JPEG files is the progressive option which means you will the internet will download this image in multiple passes if you turn that on that will actually make the file size even smaller a little bit smaller than without that option and if you want to check it you can even preview it in a browser by clicking on the preview button here at the bottom left of the dialog box and now you can see this is how it looks let me refresh the view and below the image you can also see the details and that's all what I wanted to show you in this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned some new ways to work with JPEG files thanks a lot for your attention and I hope to see you next time